Hi everyone, and welcome to our talk about pruning preferred operators with Novelty. My name is Alexander Tuisov, and this is a joint work with Michael Katz from IBM Research. So let us establish some background first. We are talking about problems in uh, SAS plus formalism. So you got your state variables, which are of finite domain. You've got your operators uh, in the form of preconditions and effects. We've got our initial states, which is a full assignment on the state variables, and we've got a goal that we want to achieve, which is a partial assignment on the state variables. We are doing satisfying planning, so we disregard any costs incurred along the way. And we are doing heuristic forward search, which is pretty standards for these types of problems. So in our paper, we prune preferred operators using novelty. So we'll give a brief reminder about both of these concepts. First of all, preferred operators. A preferred operator is an operator that is a part of a relaxed plan, plan that solves some relaxed task. The exact definition of a preferred no operator is uh, dependent on the underlying heuristic, but in all of these cases, the preferred operators have a tendency to help us solving our original task. There are several ways how can we use a preferred operator. Uh, during the search, but the most common is uh, you just keep the states that are achieved by preferred operator in a separate queue, and then you just alternate between the queues. The second part of our background is the concept of novelty. Novelty is useful to prioritize the states that uh, have some new information that we haven't previously observed in our search history. For example, we can speak uh, about the novelty of a fact, of a single fact, which is just a variable uh, and its value. For example, x equals to 2. And we can define uh, this novelty score of this fact as a minimal value, heuristic value of some underlying heuristic, uh, the minimal value between all the states that have contained this fact. So if we had some states that contain uh, the fact x equal to, we just take the minimum between their base heuristic values. And we can define novelty score of effect in some uh, particular state s, and we will just define it as a novelty score of a fact minus the heuristic value of this state. Having defined novelty for a fact, we can aggregate from here to define novelty of a states and prioritize them accordingly. So the uh, most basic way of doing this was introduced in 2017, and it just states that you take uh, a state, and we deem it novel if it contains at least one novel fact, and we give it a heuristic value of zero, thus separating novel states from non-novel ones. That's it for the background, and let us move forward to our actual contribution of this paper. So, uh, what we wanted to do is to refine the preferred operators set using novelty. And the main idea is that the preferred operators set is flawed. It contains too much operators that are uh, not useful. Uh, how do we know this? So first of all, we ran some random pruning of preferred operators. We threw them out of the set with some uh, relatively high probability, 0.75, and this alone already improved coverage. So this is the reason why we believe that preferred operator set, as they are defined before this work, were containing too much information uh, and too many operators that were uh, not useful. And uh, we thought that if random pruning gives us uh, some results, Maybe the systematic pruning, with some uh, you know, logic behind it, uh, could give us even more gains. So to better understand how exactly do we prune the preferred operator set, please consider the following running example. So what we have here is a transition graph of a problem that has three variables. A domain for each variable is either 0 or 1. So, for example, uh, state 0, 0, 001 that you see here is a state where the, the first and the second variables have the values of 0 and the third variable has a value of 1. Also, we have some operators here and the h equals to some number is the value uh, of the underlying base heuristic 
uh, which evaluates this uh, this exact state. So, for example, for state 0, 0, 0, the value of the underlying base heuristic is h equals 2, 2. And also consider the following uh, history uh, of the operators and states we've observed. So, we started at the state 0, 0, 0. We uh, performed an operator OC, we got to 0, 0, 1. Performed O1, got to this state, we performed O2 and got to the state 1, 0, 0. Also, please consider the 1, 0, 0 to be the one and only state that we have to open now. And uh, assume that the preferred operators uh, for uh, in our problem that we can apply here are OC and O3. So let us define now. What does it mean for an operator to be novel? We derive the novelty score of an operator from the heuristic values of the uh, states that this operator was leading to in our search history. We take the minimal value of all those and we assign it as the novelty score of an operator. If we haven't reached any states by using this operator yet, which means we haven't used this operator yet, we assign it a novelty score of infinity. We can also speak about the novelty score of an operator in a particular state, for example, state S, and we will define it as the novelty score of an operator in general minus the heuristic value, the underlying heuristic value of this particular state S. So in our running example, the novelty score of the operator O3 in the state 1, 0, 0 will be equal to infinity, because this is the first time we are actually trying to apply operator O3, while the novelty score of an operator OC in the state 1, 0, 0 will be equal to the novelty score of the operator uh, OC, which is equal to 2, because it, it had led to the state 0, 0, 1 here, which had a heuristic value of 2, minus the heuristic value of the state itself, which is equal to 0, and thus the total novelty score of an operator OC in the state will be equal to 2. Having defined the novelty of an operator, we can use this definition to prove our preferred operator set, where we believe that the more novel operators will lead us to better search outcomes. We propose three methods. We can uh, take all operators above certain threshold of novelty. We can also limit the number of the operators that we want to take into consideration. So, for example, taking the 10 most novel operators. And thirdly, we can take all the operators that achieve the maximal novelty that has been observed. All the methods I described are pretty straightforward. So, for example, for the first method of a threshold, we just define some threshold B and we take into consideration in our new preferred operator set only the operators that their novelty was greater than B. Going back to our running example, we got the novelty score of O3, uh, which was infinite, and the novelty score of OC in the state 1, 0, 0 was equal to 2. So preferred operators bounded by 2 will include only O3, but the preferred operators bounded by 1 will include both O3 and OC. Likewise, we can define the k-top novel operators, the definition that you can see here on the slide. And lastly, we can define the argmax uh, novel operators that are basically the, all the operators that have the maximal novelty, which in the case of our running example is O3. And I remind you, the way that we use all these definitions is by defining a new set of preferred operators, which is uh, equal or smaller to the original one, because we only prune operators, we do not add any, and we use it as the original preferred operator set. Lastly, I'd like to point out that operator novelty is not the state novelty. The novel operators can lead to non-novel states and vice versa. For example, here the state 1, 1, 0 uh, that operator O3 leads to is non novel by the definitions that we have seen in the background, while the state 1, 0, 1, which operator OC leads to, is novel by the same definitions. 
but the operator O3 is novel that leads to non-novel state, which is also a goal, and the operator OC, which is a non-novel operator, leads to a novel state, which uh, takes us uh, away from the goal. Lastly, I'd like to mention the uh, empirical evaluation of these techniques, and I don't have too much time to go in depth here, but our best configuration uh, has a significant gains in coverage, uh, even if compared to the state of the art. So this technique is relatively simple and it does work. For more information, I invite you to read the full paper and thank you for listening.